Now let's talk about standalone servers. We've talked about the case where we have a server with a client running on it, but we haven't talked about the case where we have a server just running as a server. If we have Unity Pro, we can actually build a version of our application that's just going to run as a standalone server with no client on it at all. So the first thing we want to do is create a new script. And we can call it standalone server. So what are we going to put in standalone server? Well, we're going to put in code that will detect whether or not Unity is running in what's called batch mode as a standalone server. And then other scripts will be able to ask whether or not the app is running as a standalone server. So how can we do that? Well, first we need a couple of flags. We need a first time flag because we only want to make the determination as to whether or not we're running in batch mode as a standalone server one time. Next thing we need is a flag that we can return that says whether or not we're running standalone. And the third thing we need is the literal, the command line argument that will be passed to Unity that indicates it's running in batch mode. And batch mode is what you use for a standalone server. So if Unity is initiated from the command line and it's passed this argument, then it's a standalone server. So here's our accessor is standalone. So now other scripts can say standalone server dot is standalone to determine whether or not Unity was started in this way. So we check our first time flag, like I said, because we only want to do this once and we clear it. Now we also only want to do this in the editor or for standalone OS X, Windows, or Linux. If you want to do it for other platforms, then you're going to have to change this conditional compilation. But for sure, you don't want this code to execute on an iOS device because it'll cause iOS to crash. So the next thing we do is we simply get an array of strings that were passed as command line arguments. We iterate over this array looking for this particular command line argument. And if we find it, then standalone is true and we debug log a little message saying we are running as a standalone server and then we return true or false depending on what happened here. So that's a very easy way that we can determine whether or not Unity is running in this batch mode as a standalone server and we can provide that information to other scripts with a very simple call. Let's just go back to Unity and make sure that compiles. And it does. Okay, so now that we have a way to determine whether or not we're running in batch mode, what's our next step? Well, the next thing we could do is we can come into our network setup script and we can decide based on whether or not we're running as a standalone server what to do when this script starts up. So if we come to this awake method, we have all this lovely code here, but we can add something new. We can say, If this instance of this game is running as a standalone server, then basically do all the things that would be done if the user had touched the start network game button. So we'll set the game name, uh, we'll set a non-password protected name, we'll provide a game comment, we'll provide a game port, we'll provide the maximum number of players, now we're going to set this new flag saying dedicated server is true. And then we'll also set up some of the menu stuff so that the menu stuff would clear if uh, we were running this in the Unity editor and we wanted to see what was happening, which is a little trick we can do. We can kind of fake out standalone and run it in the Unity editor and see what happens when other machines connect to our standalone server. So we do that, this little trick here. And then finally, we simply start hosting. Now, you notice I've hard coded these values here. What probably would be better is to pass these as command line arguments. So when you pass minus batch mode, you would also pass minus game name, minus password, minus command, minus port. And then you could add those into the standalone server and it could look for those additional arguments and it could store that information here. 
And so then what we could say is we could say game name equals standalone server dot game name, and it could pick that up from the command line arguments. But for simplicity right now, I'm just gonna hard code these values. So what else needs to change? Well, we shouldn't be spawning a player in a standalone server. So we gotta change our spawn point. So first and foremost, if this is a standalone server, just get out of here. Don't do anything at all. But what about if this isn't a standalone server? Then we need to change our behavior a little bit. So down in here where we're doing the network instantiate, we can't just do that anymore. This was, probably was always a little bit too simplistic. We probably always should have been asking the server for this information rather than just doing network instantiates here. So we're gonna change this. Now what we're gonna do is if we are the server, we're just gonna spawn at our index as we've always done. But if we're not the server, then we're gonna send an RPC to the server and we're gonna ask the server, what index should I spawn at? So the server is now gonna be responsible for determining which spawn point each player uses. It probably always should have been that way. So what's this RPC gonna do? Well, let's take a look at that. It's gonna be very straightforward. If we're running as a standalone server, then we're simply gonna decrease the index at which we want to spawn at by one. The reason for this is if we're running a standalone server, then it's gonna be at index zero, and our first client is gonna be at index one, and our second client is gonna be at index two. Whereas before, our client running on the server was at index zero, and our other player was at index one. So we just have to subtract one from the index, and then send this back. Notice it's going to the back to the player that requested it. So we're simply saying, you spawn at this new index value. And now that's where we have the network instantiate. So essentially what happens is the spawn point that the player spawns at is decided on by the server. Now there's one other thing we need to do in our network setup GUI content. We have a method here that destroys things when our game starts. And one of the things that this method does is it waits for the main character to appear. So it's waiting for that instantiated main character. But on a standalone server, we're not gonna be waiting for that main character anymore. So what we need to do is wrap this so that it's conditional and say, we only, if it's not true that we're running on a standalone server, then we're gonna wait for that main character to appear. On a standalone server, that main character is never gonna appear and this will just sit there forever. Now, there's a lot more that we can do for our standalone server. There's a lot more adjustments we can make to our code. Right now, our standalone server is probably still doing a lot of things that it shouldn't be doing, but at this point, we have a basic standalone server that we can actually build, run, and try and connect to. So first, let's build this. We're gonna build it for the standalone platform, so we're gonna to have to switch our platforms. This is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna switch platforms and then I'm gonna come back after the platform switch is complete. 